One of the challenges presented to us as we fight with the gospel against abortion really across the United States or globally is the pro-life movement's rhetoric, the pro-life movement in the United States, our narrative that's being propagated not only in the U.S. but really around the world. And that is that the pro-life movement has really minimized uh, the sin, the crime in abortion by saying that women who participate in abortion, who actually get abortions, are not actually guilty of a crime. Uh, it's not actually ultimately a sin, maybe in some people's eyes. They'll say things like abortion is uh, stopping a beating heart. Abortion is, is killing a human being. And if you ask the question, well, is abortion murder? Many in the pro-life movement may be willing to say, yes, abortion is murder. But then if you say, okay, a woman uh, has an abortion, is she a murderer or a victim? And the challenge presented to us is that the pro-life movement will oftentimes say the woman who gets an abortion is a victim. And what this does is it does damage to us as we try to fight against abortion in that if you tell a legislator a woman has an abortion and she is a victim, as much a victim as the baby, then what you've done now is you've said that abortion is not really a sin, it's not really a crime, and so you've removed the issue of justice from abortion for a legislator. A legislator can't legislate based upon personal preferences, based upon simple tradition. Legislators have to legislate based upon issues of justice, morality. And if a woman who has an abortion is ultimately a victim, as much as a victim as the baby, as some people say in the pro-life movement, then she's not guilty of a crime. And if it's not a crime, it doesn't need to be criminalized. And so one of the challenges presented to us as Christians is if we're gonna fight against abortion in a philosophically consistent way, in a legislatively consistent way, we have to fight against it as Christians. We have to fight against abortion being fundamentally Christian. And that is to say, we need to call it what it is, a sin. We need to call it what it is, a crime. And that's the only way to fight consistently against abortion in the United States or in Ireland. It really is a tragic thing. A tragic thing that after 40 years of being an abysmal failure in the United States since Roe vs. Wade, the pro-life movement has had some minor victories saving some lives and we're grateful for that. But it is a tragedy in that the pro-life movement is a failure in the U.S. It hasn't stopped abortion in the U.S. And now we're shipping out our failed narrative into a country like Ireland. We're in Ireland right now in some places. It's a 14-year prison sentence in Ireland if a woman has an abortion. So they've criminalized abortion in Ireland. They see the woman as guilty of a crime. And the pro-life movement of the United States is pouring our failed narrative into Ireland and actually undoing the strength of their laws. So the only way we can consistently fight against abortion is from a consistently Christian position, from the foundation of scripture recognizing that the only hope for anybody who has an abortion is the gospel. Forgiveness, salvation in Christ and in Christ alone, where he washes away all your sins, takes away all your guilt, and he will never bring up your sins again. And that's only in Christ. So there is no hope to offer anybody in abortion with a Christless narrative, the kind of narrative that's offered from the pro-life community in the United States. And the only way to consistently win against abortion is to stand on the word of God call it a sin, call it a crime, and ask legislators to see it as such. That's how we win.